Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be working on this uh, Harry Man Chicago Northwestern Steam Locomotive. This is uh, something that uh, was donated to me uh, a while back from a gentleman named Kyle. It actually uh, came along with a whole bunch of DCC engines, and I was really excited to uh, see this because I've never actually uh, assembled an engine kit before, so uh, I've, uh, I've been looking forward to doing this for a while, but it's taken forever for me to get around to doing it. I don't know why. So yeah, today we're gonna be having a go at this. I have no idea how it's gonna go. As I said, I've never built one before, but there's only one way to find out. Uh, before we start off the video, I just have to say one thing. I know not everybody's gonna want to hear about this, but a lot of people have been asking what happened to my thumb. Uh, I had a bit of a drilling accident a while back where I was putting in this screw that was really long and I didn't know this but there was a uh, knot on the other side of the wood and uh, the screw tweaked and I was holding the board and the drill kind of went like that so uh, it's not very pretty so I've covered it up so you don't have to look at that. <laughs> anyway, let's, uh, let's begin here. Let's take all this stuff out. So uh, first of all we've got our uh, tender and this is already all painted up and whatnot so that's kind of nice. Most of this is die cast, uh, this is not, this is just regular plastic. Uh, this I think is the whole boiler assembly. I don't know, maybe we're supposed to remove this whole thing here. There's our cab, this is also made of plastic. Well, this is really in place there. Wow. There we go, beautiful. Uh, die-cast boiler and uh, here we got our wheels I believe these are all uh, made of brass so we can take those out I think that's all the parts from uh, here I didn't even check who's this made by ooh it's a roundhouse interesting um I got some other parts here I think this is probably the chassis yeah, here's the chassis. This is very uh, reminiscent of what I saw in my uh, grandmother's River RC Hiawatha. It really looks a lot like this, just uh, a little bit of a different uh, format, obviously. And uh, finally got all the other little bits here. Um, you know, I don't see a motor. I hope there's a motor in here. Uh, probably, oh, here we are. I missed some parts. So here's the uh, die cast bottom of the uh, tender there. And here is our motor. It's a cam motor, but uh, that is a very tiny motor. Look at this little thing. It's already got the worm gear attached. So uh, that should be fun. And then uh, finally, we got a whole variety of different uh, things here. Um, I think this is for... Okay, so that's for the motor. Nothing too uh, special here. Now I'm hoping uh, this does come with some instructions. Could probably assemble it without them, but I don't know. I just don't want to screw anything up. All right. Fair enough. Let's begin. So uh, yeah, I'm not really sure how we should start this. Uh, I don't know. I guess we could start by doing something really simple like. I don't know, constructing a tender. Yeah, this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be testing my limits a little bit here. <laughs> so this is all the stuff for the uh, tender there. Grass wheels, got some electrical contacts in there. Very cool. All right, so to begin building our uh, tender there, we're just gonna take all these little bits out. And uh, let me see what we actually need here, um, because there are some parts like uh, this coupler, which are uh, not relevant for my purposes. Thank you. 
Alright, so I uh, got the tender done. Uh, it took a little bit of effort to uh, get this uh, frame in here. I just needed to uh, sand down the edges, which is typical of these old die cast models. And you usually need to uh, do a little bit of uh, sanding or filing here and there. Uh, there's just little bits of flashing left over that just need to be, uh, you know, sanded down before you can go uh, putting anything together. See, this didn't fit before, and you can see it's a nice flush fit. Exactly what we're looking for. Alright, so uh, it's now quite a bit of time later and uh, this whole process has been mind-boggling. Um, at this point, uh, I've actually got uh, whole, this whole piece uh, working here, so uh, that's good. Uh, now here's something I was not expecting. I was really confused what holds on these drivers and I was looking through the instructions and I was like, I never saw any of these little, um, see there are these little uh, hex bolts right there. I was like, where are those? I have not seen them anywhere. I thought this was a bit strange. Um, as it turns out, uh, these are them. <laughs> That's really not something I was expecting, I have to say. So yeah, anyway, I guess we can start putting the drivers on. This should be interesting, I promise you. Just for this small bit, I uh, took a nail and I tapped that in there. So that's what holds that on for anybody doing this bit themselves. Well, I don't think that that went too bad. Uh, anyway, I guess we can uh, start putting on all these other parts. Uh, the people at MDC, uh, I think showed on the thing you could run this wire up through here. So I guess that's, where that's supposed to go. And then what we do is we get that little pivot right there through here. This is a very uh, common design on steam locomotives uh, models. Um, and now there's one really long screw, which is this. And that, uh, that just goes right in there. All right, well, I guess we got that part done. Wow. I just need to get this all decorated up and uh, things should be looking good. All right, so it's now sometime later and uh, as you can see, the locomotive is a little bit more, well, complete than it was uh, last time I was working on it. Um, I'm gonna be completely honest with all of you out there. This was a lot more uh, difficult than I was expecting. Um, I knew that putting this whole thing together wasn't going to be, you know, the easiest thing I've ever done, but uh, I sort of underestimated uh, the amount of detail that uh, had to go into uh, building this thing, especially with the amount of flashing. There was a lot more flashing than I was expecting, so all of that uh, just made it a little bit more complicated, and uh, I just, I don't know, I couldn't really uh, narrate what I was doing, because I really didn't know entirely what I was doing, so I had to sort of think it through and then... Uh, sort of go at it one piece at a time. And here are the results. After I uh, did finally kind of finish filming, I did, uh, I disassembled basically most of it. And, uh, cause I knew it, I knew it fit together by that point. And uh, I uh, painted up the parts and I lubricated all the mechanisms inside of the locomotive. And I put on all the little details and stuff like that. And you know, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out cosmetically. I think it, uh, it doesn't look too bad. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm especially happy with how the paint turned out on the boiler. It went on uh, surprisingly evenly, considering I used like uh, dollar store spray paint. But uh, in any case, I guess the proof of the pudding is written on the label. So uh, I guess we should take this thing over to the track and test it to see if uh, all of the efforts have paid off. I really don't know if it's gonna run or not, to be honest with you all. 
Uh, there's just a lot of small things that might prevent it from working, but only one thing can tell. Let's test it. All right, well, we've got the new Loco all set up on the track, so let's give this thing some power and see if she runs. I'm uh, really not quite sure what to think of uh, what it's gonna do, but I guess only one way to find out. Giving it some power, we have current draw. However, the Loco is not running. Oh! For a second there. I lost the current draw, that's weird. Hmm. Well, it's not drawing any current right now, so I don't know why it ran for a little while. Maybe that wire for the drawbar came disconnected. I... Well, it still looks to be tied in. I, I really don't know why that only, uh... That's very strange. Huh. Well, I guess I'll try to do some troubleshooting. Well, I managed to uh, get the locomotive running. It turned out that the uh, plate on the bottom, which is uh, responsible for holding on the uh, driving wheels, uh, I got bent at some point while I was working on it. It is a pretty soft metal, so that's not entirely surprising. But anyway, since it wasn't holding the driving wheels in the bearings, uh, I think that's why it wasn't picking up power. And that plate was also so low, it was actually hitting the switches, which is why it was shorted. So uh, yeah, now that that's fixed, it is running. It's uh, certainly not flawless, but uh, it is a runner, and uh, these things are, are just not things that, you know, you put together and they work perfect the first time. Like anything, this one's going to need some tweaking before it runs better. But for my first try at this, I'm, uh, I'm pretty pleased with it, you know? It uh, definitely does run. Uh, like I said, it does need some adjustments, but it runs, and uh, I'm pretty happy with how all the uh, cosmetic work turned out. So, uh, yeah. Room for improvement, but a uh, fine start. Anyway, I want to thank you all so much for watching. This was a uh, interesting experience. And there it derails. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone.